The past few days, they've been kind of unusual. I have found myself in the unlikely position of defending Donnie Lemon, someone I have been highly critical of for years, someone I never thought I would be defending. And now today, I find myself coming to the defense of ESPN Sports Center anchor Randy Scott. Normally, when we're talking about ESPN here on the channel, we're calling them out for their dedication to Woke United Methodist. When I saw these headlines this morning, ESPN anchor takes unnecessary swipe at women's basketball, or sports center anchor accused of mythical misogyny. My first initial instinct was to not believe it. I mean, seriously. As much wanker spanking that goes on in the halls of Woke U Bristol, there is absolutely no way one of their on-air personalities disrespected the sport of pretend basketball. ESPN proudly brags about being the home of women's basketball. We pride ourselves in airing live footage from the WNBA dump, unless, of course... Professional bowling is available. We know how much our viewers enjoy watching men roll heavy balls. Randy Scott. He is one of the current anchors on SportsCenter. He's been working at ESPN since 2012. Well, KC, who in the hell is Randy Scott? I had the same question. When I saw his name, I thought he was the local meteorologist in Racine, Wisconsin. ESPN used to have star power behind the desk at Sports Center. Dan Patrick, Keith Olbermann, Stuart Scott. Well, what about Jamel Hill? Jamel Hill? You mean this Jamel Hill? Look at that face. Does that look like a star to you? Jamel Hill, she looks as surprised as I am when Star and Smelly Jamelly are mentioned in the same sentence. Sports Center has become so irrelevant, most of us, we can't even recognize the people on the show anymore. Out of curiosity, I pulled ratings for Sports Center from last Thursday. The 6 p.m. edition of the show pulled a respectable 359,000 viewers, beaten out by such popular programming from the late 2000s like Jersey Shore. Inside the NBA on TNT, it was on at 1 o'clock in the morning. They damn near doubled the audience of Sports Center when it was on at 6 o'clock in the evening. Sunday morning, Randy Scott, he was anchoring the show. The focus to begin Sports Center was the return of Michigan State to the basketball court. The campus had just went through a tragic shooting. This was their first game back. The men, they were on the road at Michigan to play basketball. The women were at home against Maryland, involved in a tightly contested battle in something that closely resembled YMCA basketball. Before getting into coverage of both games, Randy Scott, he covered the tributes that happened pre-game. He then segued into highlights of the women's game before switching directions to the men. ESPN, they always go by the motto of ladies first. All of this, all of this seems innocent enough, right? <laughs> Come on, guys! We are living in the era of fake outrage. There is a 15-second clip circulating woke Twitter. It's been viewed over 7 million times. Watch it for yourself. See if you can identify the source of the fake outrage. Roll the film. 66-61 winners. It's their fourth straight win. Let's get back to the actual basketball there in Ann Arbor. Joey Hauser. Did you catch it? Now, coming from the perspective of a normal person, I know it might have been difficult to identify. When I see highlights of women's basketball, then hear someone segue to the men by saying, back to the actual basketball, it doesn't trigger my emotions. You just gave me highlights of the make-believe. Now you're transitioning into highlights of reality. This is another scenario where you have to grab your woke cat to truly understand the emotional sensitivity of a shit fuck. He said back to actual basketball, this man is a misogynist. He is insinuating that women's basketball isn't real basketball. Yeah, well, uh, there's no need to insinuate. I know this is not a popular statement. I know this triggers birthing persons with sensitive feelings, but there is no comparison between men's and women's basketball. I don't say that to be mean. If you don't want to take my word for it, go watch it for yourself. 
Watch the top-ranked teams in college basketball, then go watch the top-ranked teams in women's basketball. Watch the NBA, then watch the WNBA. You tell me which is the better product. It's like comparing the NFL to the XFL. There's no comparison. One is professional football, the other is backyard football. There is a segment of the population who are constantly looking for a gotcha moment. These people are likely unemployed. Perhaps they're collecting woke welfare. They have nothing better to do with their time except watch television all day or scour the internet looking for something to offend them. If they can't find anything remotely offensive, they simply make shit up by presenting it out of context. This is exactly what happened to Randy Scott and ESPN. They were victims, for lack of a better word, of a gotcha moment. Some lonely dude sitting in his government-funded cardboard box twisted this clip to fit the narrative that women's basketball is not respected. And look, it is not that women's basketball isn't respected. Like I've said before, I think it's great that basketball gives young women the opportunity at a free education. It was a hell of a lot better when the education they were receiving was real instead of being indoctrinated. But when it comes to the dump divers in the WNBA, I have little to no respect for them. Not because the quality of play is garbage. It has everything to do with the quality of the character of the people playing the game. Anyway, check out this clip in its full context. As you're going to see, this is another example of someone taking something out of context just so they could bring attention on themselves with their fake outrage. Roll the film. And a touch of normalcy to end a week of tragedy for Michigan State. Both the men's and women's basketball teams playing their first games since Monday's shooting on campus where a gunman killed three people and wounded five others. The Spartans men's team was actually in Ann Arbor last night where a normally bitter rivalry was put aside in the name of healing and support. Both teams observing a moment of silence in an arena that was bathed in green lights before the Michigan band played Michigan State's alma mater. Let's get to the combined situation between these two teams. A banner there in the student section reading a Spartan strong at the Chrysler Center. The women's program holding down the fort there in East Lansing, taking on eighth-ranked Maryland. And Iseline Alexander going to spin, make a layup inside. Michigan State uh, cutting the deficit to just six, but Diamond Miller was too much. 29 points. She has 25 or more in four of her last five. Miller and Maryland, 66-61 winners. It's their fourth straight win. Let's get back to the actual basketball there in Ann Arbor. You see how it's completely different once you see it in its full context? The reason he said get back to the actual basketball in Ann Arbor is because the clip he showed you previously was the honoring of the victims in East Lansing. These people will take anything and make it offensive. Over the next month or so, the mainstream media they are going into a full court press, trying to convince you and me that women's basketball is equivalent to the men. This fight will be led by Nancy Armour at USA Today, who will spend the entire month of March telling anyone willing to listen that women are just as good as the men. We pull in the same ratings. We sell just as many tickets. Our game is just as exciting, if not more so. Of course, it's all a load of shit. We have proven countless times here on the channel that women's basketball is nowhere near as popular as their male counterparts. If it weren't for men's basketball, women's basketball would not exist. They don't bring in enough revenue to fund themselves. Well, KC, that is misogyny. No, that is reality. I came across a story this morning that further proves the divide in value between men's and women's basketball. More specifically, the vast divide in value between the NBA and the WNBA. How many of you guys have ever heard of Sabrina Ionescu? Sabrina Ionescu? Well, KC, that's easy. She was the teenage witch on TGIF every Friday night in the 90s on ABC. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was Melissa Joan Hart. Sabrina Ionescu. She is the operations manager of the WNBA dump in New York City. They call themselves Liberty Trash and Collection Services. 
When you're walking the streets of Brooklyn or Manhattan and you see all that trash piled up on the sidewalk, it's probably because WNBA trash engineers have went on strike, demanding equal pay, along with private airfare to garbage conventions. Sabrina, she is the centerpiece of what ESPN is calling the new Big Three in basketball. You had the original Big Three of Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and Ray Allen. You had the Big Three 2.0 with LeBron James, Chris Bosh, and D. Wade prior to his marriage with Gabe. Now, we have the new and improved Big Three of Sabrina, along with two other unknown players that I didn't care to waste the time trying to identify. When the New York Liberty brought in these two unknown players to collect the city's trash with Sabrina, the value of her trading card skyrocketed. You guys remember trading cards, right? I used to collect baseball cards back in the 90s when I was a kid. Some cards were worth thousands of dollars. Rare cards, they could be valued in the millions. Right now, the WNBA is bragging to the media about the value of Sabrina's rookie card. The card recently sold at an auction. It was purchased at the highest price of any WNBA card in the history of the league. As of November 2022, the most valued card in the NBA is the Steph Curry rookie card, valued at almost $6 million. LeBron's rookie card, $5.2 million. Luka Doncic, $4.6 million. On and on it goes. There are dozens of NBA cards valued at millions of dollars. Over the last 30 days, Almost 150,000 NBA cards have been sold. Average price, $60. Sunday night, Sabrina Ionescu set a WNBA record when her rookie card was sold at auction. Just guess. Take a wild guess how much it went for. It had to be at least $100,000. 50,000. No, still not close. (laughs) 20,000. It sold... For $10,000, about the value of a used car from 2009. And even at $10,000, I think the dude got ripped off. At least with LeBron James, Steph Curry, their card will hold its value. Both of those guys, they have legacies, legendary careers. I would say it's entirely possible for Sabrina Ionescu to be forgotten tomorrow, but in order to be forgotten, you gotta first be identified. During the month of December, The average WNBA trading card, it was valued just over a dollar. Now, me personally, I don't get into these trading cards anymore. I think they're all worthless, but they're important. They're valuable to some people. It just goes to show you the difference in value in the marketplace between men's and women's basketball. I am often labeled misogynist or I'm called mean because I point out the fact that the WNBA, they don't have any value. But it's not only my opinion. Judging by the lack of money people are willing to spend on the WNBA, it seems to be a fact. But give me your thoughts. The Wanker Spankers, they try to accuse Randy Scott and ESPN of mythical misogyny by taking a clip and presenting it out of context. Even taken out of context, I think most people would agree with what he said, but you let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.